Hello, this is Max Drake. I'd just like to talk to you today about Glide apps I've been building um, uh, based on um, translation. Um, I initially did one which was a hop on hop off for Wellington which was a bus tour that took you around the main sites um, around Wellington and you could hop on and off off the bus at different points and it had um, some information on it and I suddenly thought um, you'd see the buses driving around and they would always be speaking in one language and yet you'd see the people in the van would be from all over the place. So I thought well what about a, an, an app that would actually be able to translate so I did this. Now the first crack that I did this was um, I ended up with an overarching app and then one for each particular language. So if you went to each language and you went through, it showed you all the sites that you would be going to and then it would be in that language, it would have a link to it, um, it would have a map of where that was and I also did a, a link for where to go for the buses, where to go for police or something, just general information that you might need or taxes if you misses the bus or or, um, ambulance and fire and things just for tourists coming into to, to Wellington you, you know who knows what happens but just a useful app that one could have um, the, the one thing I was unhappy with this is when I made this one up I ended up having an overarching app which was this one and then when you clicked on particular language it took you to another app so I ended up with um, I did three languages and this was another thing I had um, the, the, the language <laughs> flag I ended up using a flag to actually display which language which is okay for German but if it's Spanish do you mean Spanish um, as in Spain or do you mean Spanish as in Argentinian um, so flags would sort of not necessarily be the most friendliest way and for English just I thought no we'll have the English New Zealand flag for that so that was uh, a couple of things that it sort of brought up um, I took a lot of the information and the blurb basically from their website and uh, some of the images and stuff from there or else I just googled them up um, the next one I did was actually just going and suddenly saying well this would actually be quite useful for an art exhibition when they go around the exhibition instead of actually just seeing the things you've got the explanation in a particular language again it doesn't take that much to actually do I actually just took photos of the text on the um, wall uh, in English and then I just used tra a Google Translate app I then took it another step further and I did another one for a museum and when I did that uh, again I did it but one of the things which I found when I was just and I was just using my mobile phone to take the photos very quickly um, a lot of glare on the um, displays and things like that so doing it very quickly there were some issues and in fact one of the things I started to do was to crop so that you only looked at a specific thing and then there was the information coming through but by this one so after the first one I got the other ones all to just be in one app so all just working from one specific spreadsheet again same thing there and then right at the end I've just done a last one here which was just for another museum so I've got um, just to use some different languages I've got Spanish instead of German uh, I've got Arabic now Arabic's interesting because you read from right to left not left to right and I tried formatting that but it doesn't quite work out when you actually look you'll see it's still left justified rather than right justified I've left the English text at the top so when they actually look at the display they can follow that that is the same uh, shapes of letters as there and then that's a bit of information that they want to see they've seen something that they've interested in so going through the process uh, you've got the um, uh, spreadsheet and one of the things which I've linked up with the spreadsheets now on the main front page um, of the app if you just come straight into the app at the beginning you whoops um, you come straight onto a page with the language you know no messing around this is what I'm here for I want to get something on the language so there would be in the link to the app as QR code that you'd scan and then straight away that app would come onto your phone you can choose your language and off you go you would have your information and what you do a couple of things I've been playing around with this one after the other ones was one is an audio file <laughs> This one's actually got something on music on uh, that's going through there. And another element that I've got is also uh, embedding videos that you can also embed through. So I thought that was quite a useful thing um, to learn about. Uh, again those flags on the earlier one I ended up changing them with these bubbles of actually just having languages so um, uh, they were more generalized so for Arabic uh, 
it was just ARA and Chinese is then Spanish so it's not saying that it's um, Spanish Spanish or but it might be Argentinian Spanish or um, uh, South American Spanish or uh, different ones anyway so one of the things with uh, the spreadsheet as you see on the on the main page it doesn't have this but it has this reference line so that reference is sheet floor and this column a called all which has x's into here and that links the two sheets together sorry that and the front sheet such that from the front sheet i can now call the inline it lets me now call the other page and all of the information there so that's why i can list that information there on the main page which is what i wanted and then inside the actual sheet itself I've got the different languages. Now, a couple of things with images. Uh, when I went around very fast with the camera and just took my mobile phone camera, one, some of the images were on the side of an inset. So, in fact, the, the text is twisted. Um, uh, so the OCR reader had trouble with those. Now, again, with the OCR reader, we'll actually do this one first. For this one here, Inside GIMP, which is a free photo editing software, it's got a thing called, um, I don't know what that was called, Perspective Tool. You can actually distort your perspective on here, and so you can modify that perspective to actually twist it round a bit. It's a fiddly enough, but I've got it so that I can actually just extract that data straight into to Google Keep. So that's one of the ways that I'm doing it. Also, the other one here is if you see that image and you've got some other image here, if there's a whole lot of text, this isn't if this was just type text as well, the OCR reader gets confused. So what I'd end up doing is I'd be in photos here and I would crop this down to the bit that I wanted. And so it's only got one bit of text and it focuses on that. And I'll even try and see if I can avoid as much of the other colour as possible just so that limit the amount of confusion that it would do. So inside Google Keep, um, you would just pull up an image. So you pull in an image with a bit of text on there. Hopefully you've aligned it right. If you've got something like that, which has got um, dark shading or light shading, I might even break that into two separate ones, but I might try and get all the text the same. So I'll get it to something like that. You just bring in that there. Now you'll see when I bring this in, it's sort of semi grayed out at this point in time. And if I go to try and do the grab image text, it won't do it. It takes a little while to load. And even after it's loaded, uh, it can still not be working. Ah. And that's just made me go and look at the photo. Um, so it's still not there. But if I go into this other one, sorry, if I go into this one here, which I've already got in there, and we just open up that one and stop doing that. And this one's been in there. It could take 30 seconds a minute to actually work. You'll see that you can do the uh, grab the image text. And it comes through reasonably good. There's a couple of spelling mistakes here. It needs two L's and a T in Wellington Harbour. Um, it needs a T on the end of that instead of a double N. And Lampton is spelled M-B-T-O-N. So there's a couple that you just need to alter. But you've got the text above that you can check with. And also the fact is that it's redlining a lot of these things. So you can actually just go and change those quite easily. Um, a lot of the times instead of doing things once I've finished with a piece of text like that one there or sorry this one here which I've done uh, that one now has been there long enough that I can no it's still not letting me grab the image uh, sometimes this is why I normally have uh, two or three of them going at the same time because it just sort of speeds it up um, what I tend to do as well is after I've done one I would just um, go through uh, this one I've done I would actually just bin that image, uh, I would delete that, and then I'd go and get myself another image and carry on working through. So I'd try and sequence a whole lot of stuff. So I'd do a whole lot of the images and get them all set up, ready to go. And then the other one is that I crop the images, and once I've got my images roughly as I want them, I would load them up into, um, go, I'd load them up into Google Drive, and I would do a share link to them. And then I would take that shareable link 
and uh, so there's my link anybody can view and I go into the museum and then I'd stick those links through there so that the Google Sheet and the Google uh, images I mean the images are all in the same place so it's pulling them all from the same point so if there's a connection between your app and there it's going to pull them quite fast um, somebody else said that they have a bit of a sluggish thing with Dropbox um, so I've gone through those apps there and I've been very I've got a reasonable workflow now that works reasonably effectively Google Translate one of the things which I was doing initially in Google Translate I was doing it cell by cell and it was quite tedious so if I convert that to Japanese I'd copy and paste that so I then say oh well I was doing Chinese Japanese and I do it by cell I then found there's a thing called documents and you can actually just pull in a .xls file so what I do with mine is that I have um, this one's already got one in here so I'll just shift and delete that is that I put the English and I leave the headers in there and I also put in uh, uh, I also put in the other languages because when they translate to the languages you can cut and paste that in so it's not going to read English in that cell as you'll see so there's the, the file that I actually want so I'll save that one there I just come into here I browse the computer I go and find where that file is which is in no it's not in there um, it's there and I open that up and I'll say I'm chance to I'll translate into Arabic and there we go so we'll translate now that this just flicks it onto the screen in raw so basically and you see how this is still left justified although Arabic is right I go control a control copy and then I can go into the spreadsheet. Normally I'd actually have a different spreadsheet just so I can still use the very first one to actually with all the English language in there. So it just brings in the Arabic. Now the first thing that I want to highlight through here is that da, 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 da. Ah, now this is this is one of the things. The first thing I do actually is uh, row height and I change that row to seven then uh, you can see it now um, it's translated in but that's actually saying English in there uh, which is not what I want I actually want the Arabic which is the last one so I need that Arabic so I need to copy and paste that in there then that's ready to go so I then either set them up here or else I actually just do that directly into the, my Google Translate sheet um, here and cut them and paste them into here and set them all up and here you can see, although I've got them right justified, they go left justified there. So a few little processes there, but I've actually found that it's a reasonable workflow once you get it going. What I find takes the time is cropping the images and then sometimes fiddling with your storyboard um, to try and get it to work on an app of a, a screen that's only a normal phone size rather than the display that they actually have it in, in, in the other areas. But for translating stuff, um, I think it's quite a good solution. I hope that's been of interest for you. Thank you very much for watching, and if you give me a thumbs up, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much.